It takes so little effort to connect with the present moment, with the experiences that are here and now, embodied, real, felt. At least in moments, we can tune into the confidence. That's available to us, available to be felt. In moments when the heart connects and knows how this is being known. These simple moments really support the confidence that we know how to practice. And we do, we know how to practice. It's not always easy but we do know it's so simple. We just connect with whatever's predominant. Feel it. Trust it's arising and passing away. And what a relief to not have to hold on to anything. And to not need to be afraid of anything. Let's continue in silence.
You might notice that I'm in a different location. I'm here at Common Ground City Center in the office tonight. It's been so lovely to experiment with this, a new retreat, uh, a new way of doing a retreat with Mark at the retreat center and some of us here me here at the city center with others doing some hybrid style retreat coming in in the mornings some people linger throughout the day and do some practice there's been some cleaning happening the garden team was here this this morning and this afternoon the gardens look great there's some new mulch down i was just walking around observing all of this earlier and putting some dishes away that have been left drying and the dishwasher needs to be run before I leave tonight. Yeah, it just feels like there's so much life here right now. And yeah, it's even Robin was here this morning, our office manager who's here tonight with us. Robin, Robin was here doing a little practice this morning. It just feels like to me that when people come to one of these Dharma centers, or retreat centers like, like this one, You know, we do that for a reason. In some way we're expressing our appreciation or our aspirations to live and be in community, be in relationship with other people who care about the same things we do. And in some ways it's really, all that we do is really rooted in an expression of faith, expression of con and confidence of our, in our practice and even if the feeling of faith or confidence is fragile, it's still there and we, we help it to grow by coming and returning. And I wanna talk a little bit more about faith tonight. in part because it feels like such an uplifting topic to me and I can feel so grateful so much of the time for my teachers modeling of their own faith in the Dhamma and the ways that they have expressed that and teaching even when you know I was even even at times when I was a bad student and I'm sure we all feel like a bad student at times but But really we should appreciate that we should we should really appreciate to the fullest extent possible this willingness to return and to look around and to feel into the communities that we have access to so that we can understand something about faith, right? Just in, in modeling. And in fact, this is how faith begins. It matures from here, but a kind of bright faith is a a bit, bit naive, but really an inspired faith, a confidence to come and check it out, often because we see other people and what they're modeling for us. Yeah. And not only can we appreciate what we see in other people, but we should celebrate every time we return to our cushion. 
Every time we return to the hall, every time we remember this is just nature, every time we return to our breath, to an emotional experience, to any kind of tension, tightness, or distress, to being in relationship with each other, to a felt sense of spaciousness. It's so brave, really. And to keep coming back is a, is a noble thing that has an impact not only on ourselves, but on, on each other. And in the Buddhist teaching, suffering is the proximate cause of faith. We all know suffering, don't we? In fact, it's what brings most people to practice in the first place. There are two words that, uh, two Pali words that get translated as faith, pasada and sada. I'll talk a little bit about faith tonight and as it's expressed in the teachings. I'll start with um, some vega, actually, which is something that often precedes some uh, pasada. And sometimes the suffering we experience, the kind of suffering that brings us to practice in the first place, or again and again and again, it can be often acute, you know, like an event or something that really brings us to our knees. Or it can be persistent and cumulative, like living under oppressive conditions. But at some point we start seeking, start looking for a better way, right? And not just a better way that's gonna serve us for today, but a real deep sustaining better way. And we can look through time and we can see how people have been turning to spiritual practice after be being disenchanted with the ways of the world. You know, this has gone on for ages. So some vega is often described as a kind of spiritual urgency. We might say it's the heart's call to liberation, like freedom is calling the heart. There's an energy to the call that's hard to miss, that's often seated in these moments of suffering, right? a moment of waking up, to like, wow, there's got to be more. There's got to be a better way to do life. And a kind of determination can be there also. And there's a seed of wisdom here. But in my experience, some vega can, you know, because of the energy that comes with it, can be a, a bit agitating or even disorienting. Mm -hmm. So this is where pasada comes in, which is a kind of faith that balances some vega. It's a confidence in the Dhamma, really. And Posada is described as a serene confidence. It settles the agitation and gives us some direction and a sense of ground. Often faith doesn't, you know, the word faith might be a complicated one for us, but it's good to remember that faith doesn't require a shedding of beliefs or other spiritual practices or religious practices. We don't have to believe in anything, actually, because the kind of faith that's talked about here in the teachings is the kind of faith that is verified in our own experience. It's not a belief in anything like a God or anything but a faith with with this faith often feels to me as like very simple like oh yeah there's confidence that this is real for me for now you know this emotion that i'm experiencing or it can start that basic but this is the way it is there's some confidence in this And it's a good thing for me, at least, and may, maybe for many of us, that we don't have to believe in anything, because I came to the practice as a as a Christian. I grew up Christian, and in fact, my grandfather was a Southern Baptist preacher, so I was an intense kind of Christian. <laughs> my family was, 
And it would have been hard for me to have to, to be required or to feel any pressure to believe in anything. And so sometimes this word faith, though it can feel complicated, you know, we can, it has been a word that I've grown into. There are other words to describe faith, like confidence or conviction, sometimes devotion even. And although confidence feels like a real practical word that I can, I really do appreciate, often the word faith, as I've grown into it, brings a kind of heartfelt quality that I've learned to appreciate. And though I'm not a scholar, I've been told that in the in the Middle Ages, descriptions of faith are more of a love of God than a belief in God. So th- something has moved and transitioned there. But this love of God, rooted in love, you know, that makes a lot of sense to me. Faith in love as a force. Faith in the possibility, the cultivation of skillful ways of living and relating to life. Early in practice, you know, when I started practicing, I started my practice at Common Ground when the center was at Mark and Wynn's house, just a few blocks from where it is now. And I was a a pretty, uh, a bit skeptical by nature, but also not a extrovert by any means. And so kind of slid in and stayed in the back. And um, what I remember a lot about those times b- besides sliding in and trying not to talk to anybody <laughs> was uh, that I didn't really understand anything. <laughs> but I kept coming back week by week. I would just, there was something that I felt drawn to. And Honestly, I felt compelled by my own suffering in that time and was really looking for something. And there was enough. There was enough, even if it wasn't something that I consciously remembered, enough to keep returning, right? So faith can be hidden this way sometimes. We don't always notice it. I also remember in those early days of practice really being... um, moved by the model of some of the, of my teachers, but also students here at Common Ground. The way people walked about and moved about and kept expressing their renewing faith in Dhamma. It's the way it seemed to me today at the, at the center of the garden team in and out, you know, people doing lots of things and just expressing their aspiration to be liberated. And so bright faith is a, what Sharon Salzberg calls a falling in love, right? And when we, we know this experience of falling in love, that it's um, a bit short-sighted, <laughs> right? It's not We don't see everything. We see what we need to see in order to keep moving forward. And then this bright faith deepens into a a verified faith. And this is where faith, this is where faith matures because of our own looking, our own seeking, our own willingness to return and to connect with our own experience, right? To see this, to really start to know, well, what is this? What does it mean to be human? What does it mean to be intimate with you know, just this, what we call humanness? It's so simple. It's just the five, you know, what we, we can only know what it's like to be human in these six ways through the five senses and through the activity of mind. And so we start to like really connect with that and get confused, right? Because it's not easy. We are like, what's going on here? That's why we ask questions. And so a part of verified faith is the right to ask questions, the right to be confused, the right to not know. And it's this inquiry, the investigation that keeps us learning. And that also alongside of the learning deepens faith. And the further deepening of faith deepens into what we might call an unshakable faith, right? And this is where 
we've probably some of us have uh, and maybe all of us have tasted a little bit of this unshakable faith and maybe missed it at times but the kind of faith that's like wow that there's really something to this right and a real interest sometimes at the end of retreat it can feel like this like wow i really want to keep going i want to do another retreat or i want to find find a way to take care of my practice because there's really something here and as that faith matures even more and more in this unshakable way then there becomes a a real deep faith in the dhamma right because we're looking 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 for a more reliable sense of safety and sometimes unshakable faith or faith at all comes because we notice impermanence really we notice this and then before we know it, know it it's not there anymore right you've all had that experience probably where there's been a storm in the mind of some kind some kind of reactivity and then something happens and it's no longer there and it's kind of amazing like wow where did that go <laughs> and that gives us a little bit of faith like why wow, everything does arise and pass away i know that it's not just in a gross way that we can see it like with the change of seasons but i actually see that in a more subtle way right here in my own experience the buddha said that faith is the beginning of all good things so faith doesn't stand alone but it shows up in relationship to other teachings it's a support not the goal and in places where faith shows up in the teachings it's often the first it's the starting place so in the five spiritual faculties this is how the buddha describes the uh, how practice evolves or maybe that's not the right word but um what makes what what supports momentum right so faith a little bit of confidence like there might be something to this could be very minimal and then a little bit of effort we make a little bit of effort right like well let me just close my eyes for a second and feel into this experience of having a body it could be that simple and then the mind becomes aware of what it's like to be a human right and with an awareness awareness is a a wholesome mind state and a moment of awareness especially when we know that the mind is aware then it just seeds another moment of mindfulness as we've seen right and then with time continuity is established and sometimes we call that concentration or a uh, unification samadhi and as the heart gets more and more um good gets better and better at staying connected with our own lived experience then wisdom naturally follows and this, these are how the five spiritual faculties work faith leads to effort leads to mindfulness or awareness leads to continuity and wisdom is a natural result so if we wonder like how in the world will will, will we ever grasp these teachings well you know as mark and i have been saying what we really need to do is just is just continue to value presence because in value and valuing presence we're expressing a bit of confidence or faith again it doesn't have to be a lot just a little and that will deepen and mature with time faith recommits reinvests remembers faith is renewing faith seeks the deepest refuge and all these words recommits reinvests remembers is renewing these are all doing words right and in fact in many in many uh languages faith is an action word like we fade right we fade sada sharon talks about sada as sharon salzberg 
to, to place the heart upon. So we're getting curious about what we place the heart upon. Yeah, and we're looking for something that's deeper than maybe the ordinary places where we where we rest our rest our heart, where we um, learn the hard way that you know, relationships end and cars break and houses, living dwellings always are needing some kind of attention and support and at some point we go yeah you know if i just keep trying to be happy by getting something new or yeah, looking for some material thing or even some relationship that it just isn't satisfying and it's really sweet to be able to to appreciate um, the supports and the privileges in our life, right? Like shelter and food and relationship and all of this. And we also have to allow that appreciation to remind us that, well, this, you know, isn't everything, right? I still, I still, there's something deeper here to learn about life and the way life flows. So another way to describe would life, uh, faith, would be the willing suspension of disbelief. So rather than thinking of faith as an assumption or the taking up of a belief, it's the willing suspension of a disbelief, like a willingness to be open or to explore, or to investigate that what might not be visible to us or obviously visible to us. As we've seen on retreat, you know, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of moments of remembering to actually see into the depths of the teachings, right? To actually even see into impermanence. It's not that easy. We tend to walk around with these views most of the time that things are fixed and stagnant, even though everything is moving. And faith isn't something that is naive either. Like, you know, love and wisdom will prevail in the collective or that love will have some obvious impact anytime we want it to or that if we just have enough faith, then we're going to eradicate racism without taking action. That's not at all what faith is. It's not naive like that. But faith allows us to say yes when we're face to face with anything. So these moments of deep, difficult reckoning and the heart's willingness to say yes, to feel it, to know it, to know what it's like to be here with this right now, to be real, right? That's an expression of faith. Yes, I'm here for this. Wisdom will only be able to find the most skillful participation with life with this after we've said yes. And faith is heartfelt, right? Connected to devotion, at least in my experience, this seems really true. That aligns and realigns the heart to our deeper values. And faith allows us to surrender, right? Faith can be kind of like love. It feels like love. It feels like a deep love. Faith can be heartfelt like the pull to practice and live and love the Dhamma. It can be this desire to go to, to be close, like a wholesome desire to be close, to be intimate. Mm -hmm. And think about all the moments that we've had on retreat when we've felt a bit of kindness in our heart or love, or we felt a pull to the Dharma, right? Or we felt a desire to be intimate, a wholesome desire to be intimate. And yet it's, you know, so easily we miss that this is an expression of confidence in the practice. We've all probably had lots of moments when we have thought, well, I don't know how to do this or I'm hopeless, right? But we miss all the moments and where we do know how to practice and we do know how because we're actually doing it. Like, look at that. The heart knows how to be good, knows how to be kind, knows how to be joyful spontaneously, trip over joy, like Mark said. 
you know, keeps going back, I mean, returning. It's so beautiful. And another thing that I love about faith is that faith can hold our biggest doubts and fears, even our crashes. Because if, in these moments, if we're really honest, you know, if we're really honest about, oh, yeah, I have doubt in myself, in the practice right now. I have, there's so much fear in the heart right now. I don't know how this is workable. I feel like I'm falling apart right now. I don't know how this is workable. That, you know, in that falling apart, then the heart starts to look for a way out. And we can know something when we're really sincere. We can know like, well, I've tried that. We can flip through all the things in our minds. I've tried that. I've tried that. I've tried that. I've tried that. Well, that didn't work. That only worked for a short time. I could try that again, but I'm really seeking something deeper here. And so then we lean into doing the more difficult thing, which is to be with our own hearts and minds. And though heart, faith is heartfelt, it's also, also really practical. It provides us the motivation to do something with confidence that whatever we do might help. We don't know, but it might, right? So it's really practical in this way. It's a mobilizing force. It stirs energy, right? And so faith is connected to doing. To make a practical commitment is one definition of faith. There's a, an image in the scriptures of um, faith connected to ethics. So like a strong branch of a tree that we can lift ourselves up into the tree, you know, to uh, be safe from all the forces of desire that end endlessly pursue us. And another image of a, a another image of a tree. I'll read this because I think it's lovely. A massive tree whose branches carry fruits and leaves with trunks and roots and an abundance of fruits. There the birds find rest. In that delightful sphere, they make their home. Those seeking shade come out, come to the shade. Those seeking fruit find fruit to eat. So with the person consummate in virtue and conviction, humble, sensitive, gentle, delightful, and mild, to them come those with affluent, free from passion, free from aversion, free from delusion. So this expression of faith that becomes a place of safety for other beings, right? Because with faith and our wholehearted seeking, then we become you know, the people we want to be around, right? We become the safe people we're looking for. We become that protective force. Yeah. We're not just willing, no longer willing to settle for easy outs or quick routes to happiness, blame, denial, right? We're actually seeking something deeper, doing the harder thing. And although we're all going to be dissuaded from time to time, because life is hard, practice is hard, we can remember that doubt is a part of the path and fear is a part of the path and frustration is a part of the path, just like love and patience and kindness. So it's okay if we find ourselves in um, a contemplation about heart, how hard things are and having some doubt about whether or not this is workable and we can remember to borrow the faith of others right we can remember to look and notice how people around us who are who seem to be committed and there's a whole group of us here right now right we're all experiencing storms but we come back to the room and we try again so 
close my comments just by reminding us too that we like we like these stories of a hero's journey, leaving everything behind and doing big and radical things. But you know, we all express faith in really ordinary ways. And so we can remember that. Like we don't, we can we can remember to to be on the lookout for faith expressed in these ordinary ways, like just the returning, right? Just the returning, the willingness to get up again, do it again. Right, the willingness to back off, yeah, and just feel to feel the breeze. It's been a beautiful day here in Minneapolis. It's breezy and temperatures just right, and it's great for walking. There was someone on retreat here doing some walking practice when I arrived tonight in the evening, just doing a little walking and then laying under the tree. You know, it's nice to take these moments and just feel and appreciate. Like, ah, oh, presence isn't always hard. It's sometimes really beautiful and feels really good. And it feels good to be in community. And it feels good to, to, to remember that I know how to do this. And I know how to seek. Ah, I know how to seek a balanced heart that allows me not to touch the difficult, not just to touch the difficult, but also to feel into the beautiful too. So let's just rest back for a moment. And let go of the words together. <clears throat> 